What's up, pilots? It has been a while since I put out a video. I'm back in the game though, and we are going to start off with a video on a drone simulator. This one is geared more towards camera and GPS drones, so we're talking DJI products or any of the other in that department. And the simulator in particular, pretty sure that was a mosquito that just flew by. The simulator in particular that we're going to be looking at is called Zephyr. It is created by Little Arms Studios. Uh, they reached out to me and wanted me to check this out and give it a review. In the demos and the videos I've seen about it, they boast true to life weather effects. So we'll be checking that out. And also in the demo that I saw, it looked like they have very good instructional and um, other types of I guess games or or missions that you need to complete in order to really hone your skills. So if you are looking to get into flying drones and you've never flown anything or done any sort of RC hobby then this could be the video for you. If you're looking for a really good simulator that you can use in classrooms or in hobby stores to get people in the air this could be it. Enough ramblings, let's jump into the computer. So this is the Zephyr launcher, or the Little Arms launcher. Um, looking at the options here, you can see it's fairly straightforward. I'm going to just check for an update, and then let's launch it. And then you get this window here, I just hit play. And then the game launches. And you're going to log in with your account and password that you set up on the Zephyr website. Once you've logged in, you'll choose your role if you have that option. And now we're going to check out the drones. We have the DJI Phantom 3, 4, the DJI Inspire 1 and 2. We also have the 3DR Solo. The Saima X5C, the Altel X Star, Parrot Bebop 2, the DJI Mavic, Unique Typhoon, Robotic Systems Titan MKV, and the AG6A. I'm going to choose the Phantom 4 and let's choose a scenario. We'll do the basic training here. I've already done a few of these modules, so I'm just going to jump into one so you guys can see exactly what these are all about. Um, using your transmitter, you are going to, well, let's turn on some wind first. There we go. Let's make this more realistic. So then the same activation sequence that is present on the Phantom is the same in this regard. So what we're doing here is we are trying to fly and land in the designated zones and once you stay in one of the zones for a little bit you will uh, see that it moves spots so you fly to the next one and that's how you complete this particular module. Looks like I am trying to whip through this one pretty quickly. I really like the uh, graphics. The environment looks pretty nice. Even though this is the basic module, um, it still was pretty entertaining for me. And I can definitely see how this could help you um, get the basics of flying. This is really good line of sight. Um, and then they give you the scorecard at the end here but uh, let's see are we gonna do another one yeah let's switch to a different scenario here let me go to the obstacle course this is one of my favorites I was trying to go really fast here let's see what we can do Now this one is completely enclosed, 
Um, it's pretty straightforward on where you need to go though. I do like how this is set up, um, but one thing that I did notice was some of the controls feel um, a little bit delayed, but that could just be because I'm used to flying um, in aggro mode, and this is in a self-leveling GPS mode. This is probably one of my better laps on this course. Looks like I am moving pretty quickly there. Oh, almost caught it at the end. There we go. A plus. All right. Let's do another place. I'll do the parking lot. So this one's a little bit more tricky than some of the other modules that you've seen before. Uh, looks like I blew past my starting one there. Here we go. Heading back. Got it. All right. And then you pass by the 712 store there. And this one, we're just zigzagging through these concrete pylons or columns. Looks like I'm trying to move pretty quick in this one, too. I don't think you're supposed to try to go this fast. I mean, maybe you are, but um, again, I'm just heavy handed on the sticks, I guess, from flying acro um, and mostly just racing quads. Ah, still got an A plus though. Alright. Alright, let's pick a different drone. Inspire 2. We will go to the yard. This is another module that I've already messed with before. Um, this one is probably one of the better ones that I tried out, um, at least in regards to um, teaching someone who's never really flown before, because this kind of has all the things you would want to do um, with a camera or a GPS drone like this, um, where you kind of just film your location um, and you want to make smooth movements. I personally probably didn't do the best job flying this one um, because I don't think I actually flew in a way that was intended, but maybe I did. Um, but most likely in a real world scenario, you would be pointing the camera at a subject um, for most of the shots. So. Um, a few of these things again are I think set up just to help you learn how to fly and um, especially for someone who's never messed with a drone before uh, this can be really helpful. Um, I really like that they show the stick overlay um, that's what you're seeing at the very bottom of the screen there in the middle um, a representation of the left and the right joystick on the transmitter. To the bottom left there's some uh, flight information, your height and things like that. Um, and then to the bottom right I'm sure is pretty obvious is your camera view from the drone. And then um, at the top left is your objective so that is where you can look to figure out exactly what Zephyr would like you to do next so looks like I am at the part where we're gonna tilt the camera down and hover right here looking at this car and this is one of the ones I thought was really nice because um, that's obviously something most people are going to do. On this page here, um, we're looking at the controller mapping. 
I just wanted to go over this really quick because I had a few issues here. Um, I was trying to set the camera pitch and for some reason when I clicked certain boxes it was deleting other ones so I'm not sure if that was user error or some sort of uh, small bug in the game here or simulator I'm sorry I'm not sure if I should be referring to it as a game per se this is the final uh, scene from the uh, demo here and I just chose to uh, freestyle so there is no objectives right now I'm just kind of whipping this thing around and um, I really like this simulator I think it has a lot of potential uh, for this one I have turned on the weather so we switch this to thunderstorm mode as you can see and uh, if I was going to just hover in place, which I didn't do for the demo, um, you would see that there is some effect from the wind. And um, I'm not sure of the effects that this thunderstorm really has. Or maybe the uh, Inspire is weatherproof, but I would assume not. All right, so that is the demo of Zephyr. Um, I really like where it's going. I like that it is focused on teaching the correct uh, flying and practices that are needed to fly drones safely and properly. Uh, a lot of people, I feel like, just grab these things because they're now affordable um, and they don't really know what they're doing. So before you put a bunch of money up in the sky, it might be better to give this a go. The support for the Tyrannus and I'm sure other transmitters seems to be pretty locked in. I didn't really have to do too much there, but I did experience a little bit of an issue. I don't know if that was me or the simulator itself just having a little bit of a bug. But um, when I was trying to clear out the... Um, control mapping for one of for the like camera up down setting um, it was like deleting the stuff in the box above it so that I figured out how to set it after <laughs> toying with it but that was uh, kind of odd everything else seemed to be pretty um, locked in and um, I actually really like the obstacle course. I want to see how fast I can really do that thing. This is also probably really good for a classroom setting or a hobby store or anything like that where you want to be able to teach people this stuff um, while they're thinking about or actually making a purchase of a drone or quadcopter. Um, I personally probably won't use Zephyr very much only because I don't fly that type of drone anymore. I started flying the camera drones but now I fly racing drones in acro mode so there's no GPS or self leveling at least not in the ones I build. I'd like to give a big thanks to Little Arm Studios for reaching out to me and giving me the opportunity to demo and review their product. Probably gonna be the simulator that I suggest to anyone who has never flown in their entire life. Thanks for watching everybody. Happy flying.